And I recognize that I'm doing the most with this video. I realize that. But what else we got to do? We on quarantine. What's up, everyone? My name is Duena, a.k.a. Glamazon 1026 and today you are going on a journey. We are going to be getting ready to go nowhere because we are on quarantine. We are social isolated. We are on lockdown. Well, not lockdown for real. We are shelter in place. We are on, we're not spreading this coronavirus no more. So we all staying at home. So I'm getting ready to go do nothing. And I want you guys to get ready with me. And we're going to talk about some things that have come up. Uh, we're going to talk about the Rona. We're going to talk about like mental health. We're going to talk about makeup releases. We're going to talk about my puppies. We're going to talk about all of that stuff. So stick with me and you'll see that. And you'll see how I got this beautiful, wonderful, great eyeshadow face. This face is snatched. Okay. We're going to see how we got there after the break. y'all we are here and we're doing a get ready with me where are we going nowhere because we are on social isolation slash quarantine because of coronavirus <laughs> coronavirus coronavirus oh well, i wanted to film this video a long time ago but um i didn't necessarily have the time to do it and so now that we are on quarantine and I'm finished with work in time for the sun to still be up and I can film and you know do all of that stuff so I wanted to do a little get ready with me uh as I'm getting ready to go nowhere if you hear like squeaking in the background that's my chair <sighs> I'm sorry anyway let's jump right into it I've already primed my face I have put on my brows and my concealer for my eyeshadow base I did my brows off camera because they were doing they were they were causing me some stress and I need to concentrate so I would not have been able to talk to you guys and do my brows at the same time I'm going to pick up this modern warfare modern warfare modern renaissance palette and a fluffy brush it doesn't matter what kind of fluffy brush any fluffy brush, basically. I'm gonna go into Real Gar. Oh, it's brand new. Oh, it's just crumbling. So we're gonna put Real Gar down into the crease somewhere around there. Um, and then we're gonna blend it upwards into the brow bone. So I'm so used to doing uh, tutorials get ready with me is kind of like tripping me out because I'm supposed to be talking now and I'm not talking um, but I did want to talk about you know a couple of things you know life changes things that have happened to me within the past couple of months and how I've been coping with them well as you guys know we just had a litter of puppies they're five beautiful puppies um, four girls one boy four black and tan one brown they are the lights of my life they have um, Today is their three week birthday. So that is like maybe like six months in the dog in a dog thing. They're walking now, they're barking now. They wake up at five o'clock in the morning and bark very, very loudly. They try to escape their pool. That's really annoying because the um, pen that we ha we are ordering, we haven't ordered it yet. And like, we're like, we're like, they can't, they can't just, you know, be on the ground, like walking around with all this stuff here. We don't know what they're gonna get into. I don't want them to poop on my rug. Like, it's just like, I'd rather them poop on the hardwood floor cause that's easy to clean up, but who knows if they're gonna stay on the hardwood floor. They might be like, ooh, what's this substance? It feels good. I'm gonna go on this rug, poop. I don't want that to happen. So we gotta order them a crate really quickly. Uh, not a crate, uh, a playpen. We plan on keeping them until they are about between eight and 10 weeks because we want to make sure that they're really healthy, make sure that they don't get any um, type of diseases like parvo. We want to make sure that they are weaned completely off of Bulma because, um, you know, they need to be able to be eating puppy food by themselves. And it just gives us some time for them to be together as litter mates so that they can get socialized with other dogs because that is important in the development of a dog. We also want to get them vaccinated because that's important as well. Don't want to send them to another house without their vaccines. So I'm going to pick up the Colored Rain and Power Palette and I'm going to dip into a Snitch. I love this color. 
and I'm just going to put that in my crease and blend upwards. You know, we want to get them vaccinated so that they are, you know, healthy when they go to their new homes and the families that are getting them are going to be happy that we gave them such a healthy dog because that's what, you know, people who gave us Titan, that's how they did it. So we're just trying to follow their example. Hi. What's up? Nothing. Oh. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you doing? What's the matter? It's oh, you don't got COVID, do you? Shit, might be. No, don't say that. We're gonna go into testify now and just deepen up that um, crease. So right now I'm just using this to deepen up the crease and blend out into the uh, transition space just to blend everything really nicely together. Um, because I'm going to do a half cut crease today. I think the last video I did was a half cut crease too. I feel like um, the puppies came at the perfect time even though we're annoyed that we are socially isolating um, or social distancing and you know coronavirus. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! Is um, you know running rampant and like messing up everybody's plans for everything. The puppies came at a good time because I was able to stay home with them for the first like almost three weeks of their life um, because school has been out and then it was like, spring break and so I've been able to like watch them develop and make sure that they're doing okay and make sure that they're not getting into too much stuff. So that's really great. I appreciate that. I really like that. Uh, there was that was that was really good. Coronavirus is messing everything up though. Um, we're supposed to go on vacation this year. That might not happen anymore. Um, we were trying to go to St. Martin, but that might not happen because you know. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! Okay, I promise I'm gonna stop using that video, but it's really funny. It just makes me crack up. And I'm just blending everything together, blending everything out. I'm trying to take my time and do this so that I get a really good blend and you guys be like, oh, whoa, that, you know, looks really good. Whoa, look at the depth in that crease. That looks great. So you see how we just built that depth by just keeping on putting Testify in that same spot? I love it. So sometimes if you're scared to use black, you can just do that with a deeper color. Just keep adding pigment, adding pigment, adding pigment and blending it out little by little bit so that you can get a really, really deep shade, like crease shade for your eventual cut crease. So I went ahead and blended the other eye out. I'm going to do a half cut crease today. I'm gonna to be using the ABH Eye Primer for that. I am also going to be using their number 18 concealer brush. You can use any concealer brush, whatever you're more comfortable with. It doesn't have to be um, circular, I mean like rounded, it can be straight. Whatever it is that you're comfortable with, you can use uh, any type of concealer brush to cut the crease. All right, now I'm picking up Riviera. I'm going to try to use the white that's in here as a lid color. I don't know how good it's going to be because I didn't clean off the um, concealer. The concealer is kind of tainted, but we're going to try our best, okay? I guess one of the main reasons I wanted to talk, I wanted to make this get ready with me. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Is because, um, you know, I've had a lot go on over the past, um, I want to say about four months. Uh, you guys know I did a video last November-ish, my first pregnancy ending in miscarriage. And um, so, you know, we waited for a while to start trying again. And we tried, <laughs> that sounds weird, we tried to have a baby. And I got pregnant again in November and I miscarried again in December of last year of 2020. So it was really, really uh, like stressful. I struggled a lot. This past year has like been probably one of the worst years of my life um, as far as like mental health and anxiety and depression and stuff. And as a therapist, I, you know, was being really hard on myself because I was like, how are you going to take care of all these other people and you're not even like taking care of yourself very well, you know? It took a very long time for me to kind of get back on my feet, you know? Um, and it took a lot of work with my therapist and uh, my supervisors have been really supportive. Um, 
I have uh, friends and family that were really supportive, you know, um, like I found out I was having a miscarriage and one of my friends came over like almost immediately. She was just like, I'm coming over. I'm in the neighborhood. Uh, what do you need? And I'm like, mm, nothing. And she bought me cookies and she brought her children. I know that seems like if you just had a miscarriage, why would you bring your children? But I mean, I love other people's children. I just get sad that I wasn't able to have any of the children that I conceive. So it was like really, really tough for me for a very long time. I'm going to try the Norena palette white number C1. I have so many of these things just to see if I can get it a little bit brighter. It looks good on camera, but in real life, you can see the purple poking through. I really should have just cleaned, but I was being lazy. Um, so let's see if this works. Yeah. So it took a really long time for me to like feel like myself again. I felt like nothing was working. Nothing made me happy. Like even doing makeup and stuff, like I would get excited a little bit, but it would just, it would take me a long time to get motivated to do makeup. And most of the times it was just like me um, filming because I know I said I was gonna put up videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, and even like last year when I had my first miscarriage, I was watching some videos and I could see like where my attitude changed, like my personality kind of dropped off because I was just going through a lot, you know? There was a lot of why did this happen to me? Like why did God allow this to happen to me? Like why did he allow it to happen twice? Like it was just like, it was just, it was a lot. And Reggie and I like really struggled through this time because it was just, I don't know, it's just like a really big weight that it puts on your family um, and on your marriage and on yourself. So um, after this last miscarriage, uh, I talked to my therapist and, you know, she had been talking to me for a long time about going to see a psychiatrist because like I was going to therapy once a week. Um, sometimes twice a week like Tuesdays and Thursdays and like there was no movement none whatsoever I was just kind of like stuck and there was nothing that we could do about um, like about what was going on and so um, like everything she tried to like to teach me or to tell me or you know suggest like nothing was working I was still just like Reggie told me I was the walking dead that's what he called me he said you're not happy anymore. You're just, it's like the life has been sucked out of you. Nothing that excited me before was exciting me now. Like I just, it was just, I was kind of like checked out basically. I wasn't doing anything. Like everything stressed me out. Everything made me sad. Everything made me anxious. Everything, like I just had all these emotions and I felt like nobody, like even though there are people who've had miscarriages, I felt like nobody understood the depth of my pain of my sorrow and you know it was just um it was a really tough time like I remember I miscarried at the beginning of December and like two weeks later I went on vacation with my family it was my godfather's birthday and like we were having like parties and stuff and I was like keeping to myself I wasn't talking to anybody like and like my mom's friends and his friends were like oh you know you're like hiding out from us blah blah and it really had nothing to do with them like West Indians have this really big like respect thing and it had absolutely nothing to do with them it had everything to do with the fact that a week and a half prior to me getting on that boat I miscarried and it was just like even like on a vacation even like doing things that I normally would love to do I like hated it I was just depressed I was it was really 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 dark time so anyway my therapist god bless her she gave me a deadline like that was my homework my homework was to go to a psychiatrist um she gave me a deadline and she said by this date you have had she's like you don't have to go but you gotta make your appointment the issue in nashville is that a there aren't that many black women um psychiatrists and i tried to you know stick with black women because i feel like they may understand a little bit more like we have shared experience so um they may understand a little bit more than somebody who is not my ethnicity or my race i mean i have absolutely no problem going to other doctors but i try to do black women first and so i couldn't find a black woman psychiatrist they either were not taking any new patients or they would not take my insurance and then 
once we ro ruled those out, then I was like, okay, well, let me get some other recommendations from other people who I know that go to psychiatrists. And then those psychiatrists didn't take any insurance. And it was like $400 a session. And it was just like, whoa, 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 $400? I was like, I don't need it this much. But um, I made a promise to my therapist. And I told her that I would make an appointment. And so all of the, like I went on my... <laughs> went on my insurance um, website and they gave me a list of all the providers that were in network and none of them were like either answering their phone or they were too expensive or you know just like little things like that so I was just like you know what let me go to Google and I googled and the first number I called they were like yeah we have a, an appointment available for you in two weeks so you know I went and I went there and it was just like really uh, scary for me because I was like oh my gosh I can't believe I'm doing this this is a big deal um, I never thought and that's another thing like with West Indians uh, you have there's a, a really big stigma on mental health and mental health help and mental health and psychiatric medication and so you know i was just like man if i tell my parents they're gonna be like so disappointed and i don't want that to happen or you know they are going to be like let me let me let me blend and talk um but they're gonna be like why are you going there you don't need to do that and they would just probably shame me out of going and getting the help that i needed because clearly i needed it because nothing that we were trying was working. I was still stuck, you know? And so, you know, I didn't tell my parents that I was going, but I did tell my sister. And even she was just like, why are you doing that? You don't need that. Like, they're going to put you on medicine and that medicine's going to make you want to kill yourself. You don't want to kill yourself. And I was like, no, I don't want to kill myself. But um, if I died, I wouldn't be upset. And I'd just be like, cool, you know? And that's how I really know that I needed help because it, it was there was no suicidal ideations. But there was a lot of like, you know, like how, okay, so I'm, uh, I exaggerate a lot and I'm very dramatic. So like, I have like a chest pain. I was like, oh Lord Jesus, is this the one? Are you taking me? You calling me up yonder? And like a chest pain would happen. I'd be like, am I dying? And I'd be like, yeah. You know, and that's how I knew that I needed help because that was my outlook on life. And you know, Reggie was really worried about me and you know, all like, my, you know Kelly was worried about me too but she did not want me to go to see a psychiatrist because then you know the because of the stigma um you know and she's like you just need to go to therapy I went to therapy I'm fine blah blah, blah. you know not know like not knowing or realizing that everybody is different and every I mean I guess she knows that but you know a psychiatrist is a big step anyway this video gonna be long guys i'm sorry when you're doing a matte look um you don't want to blend the matte shadow on your lid like you do like the matte shadow that you use like in your crease and all that you just want to press it in just press it in um if you see me doing that's what i'm doing pressing it in anyway i'm gonna pick up deception from the colored rain palette and i'm gonna put that next to the white we're just gonna blend oh yeah that's what i wanted i'm gonna blend that right in here Anyway, you know, this is not to say, you know, anything about my sister or anything. Um, you know, she really was just looking out for me. But, you know, there is a stigma in the West Indian community and even just Black American community about going to therapists and going to psychiatrists. And so she was just really, really worried. Anyway, um, around that time that I was making those appointments or I was going to my therapist, I had two friends die uh, very young. Like one was like 33, one was 37. And they died within a week of each other so it was just like a lot going on so i had the death of like i had a miscarriage then two of my friends died like a month later and you know it was just it was a lot and it just took a really really big toll on me and i just uh if you look at my um instagram i stopped posting for a while because i stopped doing makeup and i had like videos that i had to get out like the mental cosmetics because they had sent me that and it was just it took a long time for me to be able to film that um then you know there were some other ones like you know i had content that i had to put out but it just took a lot out of me and so i only put out content on youtube and not on any other platform because it was just too much like i just couldn't deal with it so anyway um i went to the psychiatrist uh that day that when my appointment was and um you know they're taking my blood pressure and it's so high and they're like oh you gotta have blood pressure i'm like girl no i am nervous like, this is my anxiety talking like I usually don't have very high blood pressure at all um but the last few times that I've been to a doctor my blood pressure has been high because 
I went because I was um, miscarrying, <laughs> you know, and now I'm going to a psychiatrist uh, to, you know, possibly be put on psychiatric medication. It was just like a lot. So I was just like, mm. <sighs> yeah, my blood pressure is high, but I don't have high blood pressure. How about that? You know? And so anyway, um, this looks crazy, but it's okay. We're going to fix it. Um, and so then like we get in there and I'm sitting down talking and you know I'm like crying and she's like well you know it sounds a little bit like ADHD to me and I was like I mean yeah I have ADHD like undiagnosed I diagnosed myself because I well you can't diagnose yourself but like I see a lot of the traits that people with ADHD have in myself and I'm like you know <laughs> I got me some undiagnosed ADHD but it was always a joke anyway she made me take an assessment for ADHD and I passed that with flying colors meaning I have ADHD inattentive type um and she was like well do you want anything for it and I was like no I mean I've been living with it for 34 years you know I should be fine whatever um, and then she was like, okay, well, you know, a lot of people, they say, you know, say they have depression and stuff. And once they get on their ADHD meds, um, or anxiety, they have ADHD. Once they get on their ADHD meds, you know, that goes away. And I'm like, no, I feel like those are two separate issues. Like they might be, they, they might be connected, but they're two separate issues. I'm just taking a clean brush to blend between the two of these so that we don't have this line right here. Um... Yeah. And so, you know, she was like, okay, so then we did um, a depression assessment and an anxiety dis assessment and then I like passed those with flying colors too. So she was like, well, I'm going to, she was like, I know you're going to try, you're trying to get pregnant. So I'm going to put you on a medication that, you know, people can take during their pregnancy. Um, and we'll see how that works and you'll come and see me in a month and we'll see like what goes on because you know it takes a while for these um, medications to get in your system to its fullest potential and so you know we don't want to stop you too soon because you feel like nothing is happening blah 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 whatever right and so I was like okay cool whatever so she gave me Zoloft and I'm on um, and then um, she was like and if in a month you feel like you need something else then we can kind of try and address the ADHD and I was like all right fine so the first day I went home that day and I was like, oh, I don't want to fill this prescription. Uh, you know, like blah, 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 whatever. It's just going to be all bad. And, you know, I'm going to feel like I'm a crazy person because um, I'm, you know, taking medications. And it's just like, you know, you know, all these, all these uh, beliefs I put on myself because of my occupation and my you know family life and like how I was brought up and so you know they were kind of um what were they doing they were coming back to trip me up you know um my critics my inner critics were were on and popping that day anyway my sister was like well you already went just go get it filled I was like all right fine I was like okay so I went and got it filled and I didn't take it that day but I started taking it the next day and that next day I went to work and it was I had a panic attack like it was bad like I was in the middle of the hallway like I almost passed out I, had to, I just ran into somebody's office and I was like I need to sit down she was like yeah sure sit down and she like took me into like a conference room and um like I had never seen this part of my school before in my life I didn't even know where I was um and then like I was in a conference room they gave me water and she was like stay here until you calm down I was a school psychologist and like, you know, that was that. And so that day it was bad. And I feel like that day I went to therapy and I told my, 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 my therapist and she was like, you know, sometimes, you know, it's a lot happening biologically, chemically, you know, so just let's, let's ride it out. So as I progressed, like the first week I had pretty high anxiety about the second week, it started to taper off. Um, by the third week, I was feeling a little bit better. Fourth week, um, I was feeling a little bit better. We went back to the doctor and I was telling her, you know, like, I've been doing pretty well like emotionally but I just still feel stuck in my career or stuck in the things that I need to do like I am procrastinating with things that I need to do and um I don't need to be procrastinating and it causes me anxiety because um I know I need to be doing them but doing them causes me anxiety like thinking it was just like a big run around like a big circle and she was like yeah, I think that's the ADHD I'm gonna give you this Adderall and I was like oh I don't want to take Adderall I was like all right fine whatever and I was like, you know what? The Zoloft work pretty well. So let me just try it. And I can stop taking Adderall at any time. Like I don't have to take it every day. I only have to take it when I need it. You know, if I need to, you know, 
like really 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 focus um that's what i need you know that's what i need to do and so you know she was like all right um let's go get this filled and blah 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 whatever um and so she gave me that prescription and she gave me like she refilled my zoloft and she was like all right we're gonna come back in two weeks and we're gonna talk about how this adderall is working for you anyway two weeks passed i didn't get the adderall it's not i took the the thing in but everybody's on adderall and adderall was out of stock so i didn't have it so she was like all right so she gave me another prescription where they could they doubled my dosage and cut them in half so that i could take them so they were able to do that because that one wasn't stock whereas the smaller dosage was in stock so whatever so i got it and like i took it for the first time when i needed to do a presentation at work and it was just like my brain was like i felt like i was on the limitless pill like i keep telling people that and i'm like i took it and i was like is this how everybody else like functions because like my i was like sharp and on point i didn't forget what i was saying i didn't forget where i put things like i was able to do something and leave and then come back and do it again like one time i was cleaning and i put my phone in the refrigerator and then i went back later and picked my phone up from the refrigerator and i was like how did i even remember that was there that would never have happened i would have tore the house up looking for this phone because i would not have known where i put it you know and i'm having a really hard time blending this white and this purple together if you guys can't tell oh my gosh all right, well, I'm gonna stop now. Okay, let's just, okay, whatever. We're gonna go to um, Snitch now, because that was one of the colors that we used. I'm gonna go pick up Snitch and put Snitch in the back here. Um, but yeah, like, it was just like, it was like a whole new world. Like the, um, the Regina Bell and People Bryson version, not the one from the movie. It was, oh no, no, is that who did it? Yeah, 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 that's what did it. Um, Beauty and the Beast was Celine Dion and People Bryson. But it was the Regina Bell and People Bryson version of A Whole New World. I was just like, this is amazing. This is amazing. And so, you know, I was really scared to take it because I thought, like, if I took it, I would be, like, wired. Like, oh, you know, like, oh, my gosh, I'm on Adderall. But I took it, and I felt normal. And my therapist was like, that's how you know you needed it. And I was like, true. Um, you know, and so I was able to get, like, a lot done uh a lot more done career wise and anyway i'm telling you guys all of this because i feel like i have like i would say like i have a little platform i do have a, pla a little platform and we actually got to a thousand today so congrats to us there are a thousand plus glam fan members um but i have this you know small platform and i know what a big deal it is in our community to be on psychiatric medication and how a lot of people struggle with things that are going on in their life that either you know i don't know people struggle with things that are, this eyeshadow look is killing me it really is i might just come back when it's done <laughs> because i'm struggling y'all I am struggling uh, but you know like anyway back to what I was saying um, I want to use my platform for good um, and I know that there are a lot of people out there that are struggling and that would never go to the psych psychiatrist and talk to them about medication because of the stigma attached to it within our community and so you know here I am uh, a uh, American born Caribbean heritage woman uh, that is sees her psychiatrist regularly and like the Zoloft and Adderall combo has helped me break out of the rut that I was in like seriously like one day Reggie came home and I had like cleaned the whole house and that is just like that was unheard of because if it wasn't anything that had to do with like immediate like okay yeah you gotta brush your teeth you gotta you know cook so that you can survive or whatever if it wasn't anything like that like basic needs I wasn't doing it and so like Reggie came home he was like are you are you on drugs <laughs> and i was like adderall <laughs> you know and after like the first month of me being on zoloft i asked reggie if he saw a difference in me he was just like yeah you know you don't like it's like almost like you have your life back you're you're not you're not a zombie anymore basically y'all i hope this eyeshadow come out good it actually don't look bad i don't know uh, something, something in here is not is not working. We gonna fix it though. I'm gonna fix it off camera because I'm about to stop talking to y'all about this. Because this video is long enough already. You know I hate long videos. It scares me because I'm like nobody wants to watch that.
my takeaway from that whole entire long story is life is short take the drugs honestly not like real drugs guys say no to drugs dear blah 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 whatever but if you have the opportunity like if you're struggling and you have the opportunity to go see a psychiatrist and they prescribe a drug to you don't be scared of it I was very lucky to get on a medication that worked for me the first time. That is not everybody's experience. I know a lot of the people that I've worked with over the past years, that they've had to try multiple medications at multiple dosages before they found what worked for them. And you know, Zoloft isn't gonna be everybody's like, oh yeah, yeah, we got it. Or even Adderall, there's so many different ADHD medications. There's so many different um, depression, anxiety medications. And so like, you just have to figure out what works for you. But I just want to tell you not to be scared to take that step. Don't be like me because I could have gotten my life together a long time ago if I wasn't so scared to take that step. Like I actually feel like myself, I'm cooking for fun now. Like I'm cleaning my house. Um, I mean, I'm not exercising, but I've always hated exercise. So, you know, but, you know, just little things that I, that I missed out on because I was so sad and so depressed and so anxious and so scattered. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing them and I'm enjoying them, you know, and that's another thing. Like if you're like a Christian, they're like, oh, you just need Jesus. Jesus pray, pray, pray the depression away and I'm pretty sure that my mom's gonna watch this video and this is how my mom is gonna find out that I've been taking psychiatric medication so hey ma how you doing I love you and I just didn't want you to say nothing crazy to me because then I would probably would have started crying <laughs> but you know <clears throat> You can't sometimes, you know, you can't just pray the depression or the anxiety or the worry or whatever. You can't just pray it away all the time. So um, I'm very happy that I was able to find a psychiatrist that, you know, she's not black. She's a white lady, but, you know, I'm happy that I was able to find her to, you know, kind of get me on the track that I need to get on so that I could start living my life again. So I'm going to put some liner on now. And I'll meet you at the end of the liner. I told y'all I was gonna meet y'all on the other side of the liner, but I decided to meet y'all on the other side of most of my face too. I'm just gonna blend this out and we'll talk about something else real quick. How have you guys been handling the whole coronavirus safer at home quarantine thing? I've been doing a lot of work from home, which is very difficult when you're a therapist because your main, the way you get money is by visiting clients and seeing clients. And it's very difficult to see clients at home, especially when a lot of yours have state funded um, insurance and state funded insurance will not pay for um, telehealth. So I can't do like Zoom meetings with my, um, the people who have 10 care. It's pretty uh, upsetting and it's pretty, um, like they need the, they need help and I need to get paid. So, we gotta figure out something, state of Tennessee. We need to do something about this. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how we've been doing down here. How 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 it's been going with the coronavirus down here. Coronavirus. Okay, that really was the last time that I will use that. <laughs> um, but you know, all in all, uh, I was freaking out a little bit at first. Um, but then um, I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, like I told my kids, you practice good hygiene habits and you, you know, isolate yourself from people. So it's been me and Reggie and the dogs being isolated. I mean, Reggie still has to go to work, but you know, when he comes home, like I bought a lot of Lysol spray and Clorox wipes. Like I had Clorox wipes, a lot of Clorox wipes here. I have Clorox in the house. Like we always have a lot of cleaning products. So I really didn't need cleaning products. I was just going out to get more because I was like, oh my gosh, we need more. And I actually had just gotten um, toilet paper from Costco before this happened. So I didn't you know, need to go run out and get toilet paper. Um, the things I needed were things that, like food, like bread, like they didn't have no bread in the store, but I found bread one day. And a lot of things that we needed, like cleaning supplies, we had because we just had the puppies. Like we had all the hand sanitizer that we needed. We had like alcohol, like alcohol pads. We had all this stuff because the puppies came like the week before this got really big. And so we just didn't have to go out and get it because that was a blessing because you know, 
we had from the puppies. Like I had been stockpiling from, because I knew the puppies was coming, you know? So that was great. All right, y'all, we coming around the mountain. We are almost finished this video. I'm gonna use my Patricia Bright um, You Are Gold palette to uh, bronze. And then I'm going to use the Dust Till Dawn palette to contour. I'm gonna keep that same energy and use the blush that's in the Dust Till Dawn palette to blush my face. I got a lot of blush on my face and it's okay. So while we're waiting for my face to dry, I'm just gonna go in and finish my eyes and just gonna do the reverse of what we did up here. So we're gonna start with the dark purple and end with the light purple or the brown, I haven't decided yet. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna be using the highlighter in the Dust Till Dawn palette to just finish up my face so that we can get out of here. And I guess while I'm highlighting, we can talk about um, like any new makeup releases that you guys see that you really, really like that have caught your eye. I haven't seen anything recently. I don't even think I'm gonna make VIB, I mean, not VIB, maybe not even VIB, um, Rouge this year on at Sephora because I don't see anything that is just like catching my eye. I have no idea why that is. Like, I'm just not excited about these new releases. Except the Fenty Cream bl Blushes and Bronzers. That's the only thing. But other than that, it's just like, man. Plus I have so much makeup and it's just like, what are you gonna do with all this makeup toy now? You don't need anything else. So I'm on like a low buy, that's what I call it. It's not necessarily a no buy because there are gonna be some things that I want, I know that, but right now there's not that much that I want. And uh, so I just don't need to be spending frivolously. So for lips, we're going to do Plum Lip Pencil by MAC. Anastasia Beverly Hills Stripped Lip Liquid Lipstick and then NARS Chelsea Girls um, Lip Gloss. So for this big, bold eyeshadow look, and a big bold lash. So I'm gonna use the Be Bold Lashes by Blush by Naomi. These lashes are really good. This is like my 50 millionth time using them. And they are just so nice and fluffy and they flare, which is my favorite type of lash. Ugh, looks so good. These look great. I look really good. I look really good. I'll be right back. All right, y'all, this is it. We are done. Quarantine and chill is complete. I love this look. We were struggling for a little bit with that eyeshadow, but it turned out real cute, didn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just trust me. The journey doesn't matter. It's always the destination, okay? That's something that you can think about with psychiatric medication that's what you can think about with this quarantine coronavirus and that's something that you can think about with eyeshadow <laughs> so anyway um yeah so i um, just got ready to go sit down on my couch and eat some chowder while watching tiger king on netflix uh we're not going anywhere because we are socially isolating from everybody so that this uh the virus can clear up as quickly as possible so you know tell me what you guys have been doing uh during your social isolation time have you picked up any hobbies have you been reading what books are you reading what netflix shows are you binging you know i've been cooking a lot and cleaning a lot and uh playing with the puppies and watching tv and also doing work like i do my work during work hours and then at night i just you know do whatever i want um I've been staying up later too because like I can just like roll downstairs and just do my work so you know 
it's not that big of a deal. Like if I gotta be at work at eight, I can get up at 7.45 and be downstairs at like by eight, but you know, whatever. Anyway, tell me how you guys are faring with this social isolation and uh, I just wanna know all about it, what you guys are doing to keep your sanity. If you guys like this video and like this format and like this length, let me know in the comments that you do so I can do it more often. Tell me if you want me to do this like once a quarter or like don't do this no more because it's very, very long. I'm a big girl, I can handle all that criticism, okay? So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We made a thousand already, so I don't have to give you my spiel on we're, you know, on our way to 1K, because we made 1K, and so I'm so happy. Um, and our next stage is 1,500. I cannot wait to get to 1,500 subscribers, and you guys are really, really important to me, and thank you guys so much for all your support thus far. Um, we are not gonna stop subscribing and pushing this channel we're not we just not gonna stop the sky is the limit okay we want to get to a point where we can be like blue ivy and be like never seen a ceiling in my whole life i mean i did see a ceiling in my whole life like she probably never really seen a ceiling in her whole life i come from meager background so i have but we're gonna have that mentality okay word to blue ivy so uh, don't forget to subscribe down below. Click the notification bell so that you can be a part of the Glam Fam and know exactly when I upload. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Glam's on 1026 and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.